epithelial tissue. The idea of the epithelial tissue is to provide a protective covering. Be it heart, be it kidney, be it liver, each of these organs have a layer which separates it from another organ. And that's very very important because uh, to maintain a proper flow of the activities it's required that each organ have a kind of separate covering and this separate covering is made up of a continuous sheet which is tightly packed with no intercellular spaces that is present. Good examples would be lining in the mouth, skin, you would have lining in the blood vessels, lung alveoli, those are examples of that. Uh, sometimes you have these continuous layer with no intercellular spaces but they do allow permeability and that's for exchange. So be it the exchange of material from one layer to another, it's very very important that you have a permeability. So besides the complexities that we talk about, the most important aspect under an epithelial layer is providing a kind of protective covering, separating the organs or a group of tissues from another group of tissues and you have a kind of uh, uh, permeability that is provided for exchange and disposal activities. Now these epithelial tissues can be of various types. The first and the foremost, the most simple of those is a simple squamous uh, epithelium. You have thin and flat layers with delicate linings that are seen. So esophagus and mouth cells lining are good examples of it. Again you have the linings of the blood cells, lung alveoli which are good examples of a, a simple squamous uh, epithelium where you have small small uh, flat structures that are arranged in a very closely uh, closely knit layer with a very delicate uh, lining that could be seen. The next is stratified uh, equimus epithelial, uh, stratified squamous epithelial. So stratified squamous is usually a, pa a layer which is arranged in a pattern. A good example is skin. So the idea is if there is any wear and tear, so to prevent any kind of wear and tear that occurs, you have a stratified squamous epithelial that is present. A good example as I said is skin. In the case of simple epithelial, you have a kind of uh, example which is a mouth cell, lining of the mouth cell, esophagus or lung alveoli that is seen. The next is columnar epithelial. Columnar epithelial is usually seen where you have absorption functions. So good example is intestine. You have absorption secretion that occurs and this facilitates the movement across the epithelial barrier. So therefore you have columnar epithelial tissues that are present. Another example of this columnar is ciliated columnar which is present in the respiratory systems where you have cilia. Now these cilia move and as they move they push the mucus forward and that's the major function of columnar but ciliated uh, epithelial cells that are present. Again you have some of the epithelial cells which are cuboidal. These are present in the kidney tubes and also in the uh, in the salivary glands, the idea is to provide the mechanical support. <clears throat> the next is glandular epithelium and they have a specialized uh, function where you have formation of multicellular glands uh, and these tissues basically fold inward to have a multicellular glands that are seen.